You'll never be 15 again going to a rave for the very first time in your life and, and just going into this big place and going, <gasps> just having all of those firsts. Mm. You'll, you'll never be that kind of age again. This ain't supposed to be a political party, political broadcast or anything, man. And, and I know there's a lot of madness going on on the streets mm. nowadays, but try and enjoy, enjoy these times because oh you're going to sit gosh. back and look and go, you know what? Raw. When man was 15 or when man was 18 and going out with a madness in the rave, mm. man should have just been enjoying that. Yeah. Killer Keller Official .com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Callum Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Callum Podcast, live and direct, central London, where central as you need to be. Pleasure having you on board. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. And you know, we keep it street culture with the television app every single time. So if you haven't got that app, download it free. Android, iPhone, you know what it is. Hey. Well, we have a very special guest inside the flat. I must say, I'm a, I'm a fan first, you know what I mean? And, and I'm sure you guys are as well. If you do not know about Cerise, then you are clearly sleeping under a rock. Toddler T, uh, Morris Delta, man. Fuck my, yes. my crew. Hold tight, Birmingham. Um, yeah. Not to mention my brother, Roska. I mean, you know, the Shawnee T. The list goes on. Collaborator, professional in his field of MC diversity. Cerise, how are you, my brother? <laughs> I'm good, bro. I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. MC diversity. I love them talk. There you go, <laughs> Hey, listen, we give it the red carpets out I'm, here. Yeah, I'm feeling the <laughs> intro, bro. I'm feeling the intro. One of the things that he failed to mention... Go on. And this guy, I'm going to drop some landage on him. Mm -hmm. You did a tune with, my, with a cousin of mine very many years ago. Talk to me. Dreddy. Oh, my God. Yo, now there is a man. Hold tight, Dreddy. So solid. Yep. He was so solid, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was like the bona fide producer, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy. Uh, one of my favourite human beings, I might add. But he's yeah. like... Energy up there to 100. Go. There you go. One million. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. What's he up to now? He produced on Buster's latest album. Casual. Um, He's done so many bits and pieces, man. Um, obviously, big with Chipmunk and those guys mm, as well. Yeah. Chippy and them, man, there. So, yeah, he's doing, he's doing a lot of bits. He's doing a lot of bits, man. So, when you talk about being fans, I was a fan of yours, bro. Yeah. From them time <laughs> there, like, looking up and being like, yo, shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry, can we swear? I don't know. Yeah, you can do what you okay. want. It's your podcast. Here we are, in the mix. Seriously, is in the house. And, again, what a pleasure, man. A little yeah. slight diversion, but the fact remains, your legacy is so great. It's one of those things that when you start opening the Pandora's box of all the stuff that you've done and, and been privy to have experienced within a scene that, let's be honest, Particularly coming coming from Birmingham, where you have where you know the, it, it is this. It's got the ragga reggae influence, the sound system combined with the hip hop, the the, the more solid boom bap UK hip hop that mm -hmm. I grew up loving. Like you, you you're, you're all within the tapestry, yeah. Have to be. Um, I think especially in Brom, um, and especially with my kind of lineage, I suppose. Um, Obviously, having been born in Brom, grew up in Jamaica, came back, lived in Brom, moved to London, you know what I mean? Mm. Kind of been in and around. You're, you're just part of both sides of that framework. Mm. And in Brom, as well as you'll know, especially when you know Jetty and all them, man, the, and Moorish and all that, mm. you see the Jamaican influence is so strong. You know what I mean? It's like, we call Birmingham, we call Birmingham like Little Yard. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it, it just is that. That's hey, the I'm feeling. That's the vibe. That. Like, I, I, I agree. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's just that vibe. So yeah. the type of music that, you come up, what you come up doing is, yeah, you're spitting, but you you just have to have that yard vibe with yeah. it. And then the sound systems and all of that, this is the framework of what makes it what it is, man. 100%. And yeah. I might add just at this point, just to do up some of the old school crew. Big shout Chase, Madflow, Rock One. Um, who else we got inside the place? Uh, uh, like, you'll have to, excuse me, I've already started running out the names. I'll be picking them up later. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I mean, this, this, like you say, the, the, the heritage of Birmingham, Mm -hmm. I mean, it harks back a lot. I mean, I used to go hanging there, doing shows as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and in a real sepia world of, of performing at a real young age, it's just barely, you know, 
shouldn't really be on stage age, you kind of age, you know. No, no, no. Yeah. Shouldn't be definitely shouldn't be in the clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. shouldn't be on stage. <laughs> yeah. Yo, but that's what it is though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You must have I mean, let's go back, like, cause you mm. must you must certainly have experienced very uh, you know, a succession of different generational shifts that went mm -hmm. on in Clubland, in MC, you know, art form. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take it there from the beginning, brother. All right, so from the beginning for me was um my main introduction was okay, so I, for me, as far as music was concerned, I had an older uncle, um, that uh, loads of uncles, but had one particular uncle that he was into music, right? Mm. So the, the 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 whole music thing and where I got my inspiration was was probably him and my granddad's, mm. to be fair, my paternal and, and and maternal grandfathers. But anyway, talking about my uncle, he was in a group called uh, Brian and Tony Gold. This is back in Kingston now, right? And in Brian and Tony Gold, they wrote for Shaggy. They wrote for all of these guys. So Shabba Ranks used to be rolling around. Ninja, like all of these artists, Kotti Ranks. Rah, rah, rah. So imagine you're a little kid, right? And you're seeing these people. And you're getting this understanding that your uncle is doing music with these people that are legends. Like man, like the man are legends, right? Wow. And you're a kid. So you just want to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... That was the whole vibe for me, as in I wanted, I just wanted to be involved. And then man, they used to listen to me chat about the Kutu lyrics and you know what I mean? Be like, all right, then cool and give me that encouragement. And then obviously come over here and I was still on that vibe, on that wave. So then I started How old to get- How would that been about the time when you came That would have been about 13, 14, 13-ish, oh, oh, right. them kind so of ages. you were ages totally there. like influenced at that Absolutely. Point, you're of the age. Absolutely. Uh, maybe a little earlier, but not, not much. Um, so I come over with that environment and I come over with that kind of mentality and- I wanted to be involved, us in the sound systems, right? So big shout out to Big John, Yardman Sound, Immortal, all of them sound systems oh, that was around man. them kind of time there. Um, and I just wanted to be on the mic and just chatting lyrics and, you know what I mean? Being being like those guys. Mm. Um, at them time there, you're looking at man like Sweetie Irie was big. You know what I mean? So we're used to Sweetie Irie, oh, General Levy. Sweetie. Tipper, um, Tipper, 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 Irie. Oh, yeah. obviously, these, yeah. well, at them, at them, them times, Tipper was more legendary status, you he know was, what I mean? Yeah. Been, he'd been, you know, he'd had them banging hits, right? Yeah. Um, General mm. Levy's already, already been popping and, you know, incredible and all of that had already been going. And you had the jungle movement. Mm. So that kind of showed me that, oh, rah, it's not just dancehall rhythms. You can actually jump on all of these different kinds of rhythms because there's a, you know, uh, you grow up in an environment where mm. it's called, you call you call it ride the rhythm, innit? Yeah. So whatever yeah. rhythm somebody flings down, you have to be on it. You just gotta be ready. So you gotta be ready, right? So whether it's hip hop, whether it's this, whether it's jungle and garage, remember, so garage started to pop up as well. So you're a kid, all of these different genres are running, and you're, you're, you, you, all you wanna do is jump. Sorry, I sound excited, but I'm talking about it. All you wanna <laughs> do is jump on these rhythms, bro. And no matter what dance you're in. Yeah. You just want to be on these rhythms. And then all of a sudden, so when you talk about um, uh, changes and shifts, mm. all of a sudden then, remember the house scene has already been going on in the UK. It has been going on from the 80s and disco scene and all of that. Um, and I, 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 So I'm coming from this environment, I ride the rhythm, like I say. So now you're entering a, 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 a dance where they're playing house music. Mm. And I'll never forget, I, I was in a house rave one time and I'm like, oh, there's nobody on the mic. I need to go on the mic. <laughs> you know what I mean? I started running on the house rhythms when and that. And when, when duty calls. <laughs> now you just have, you just have to, you, you're like, you find these openings and, and these areas where you can be and, and, yeah. and do what you need to do. And it just kind of bubbled and developed and built from there, bro. Yeah. I hope that's kind of the, the, what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The trajectory. The trajectory. Yeah, see? Do you see the words? <laughs> the lyricists do not mince words. Um, people, I think the commercial world, mm -hmm. the, Joe Public, I think a lot of us, myself included to a degree, took for granted how authentic Jungle was. Like, it was it, it was always... The attitude to rave was it was room two. It was it was second class to the, the hardcore. Mm -hmm. But we knew... Diff, it, the, it, you knew where the energy lie. You mm. knew where the breaks, where the samples were coming from. And the transition between MCs and ch chatters over to that genre... It was like it was like an influx. All of a sudden, it's like you're rediscovering mm. Navigate, a boomer, mm. fucking General Levy, you, you know, and you know the sweeties of the world. And you're just like, whoa, this is it's like a newborn. Like for a youngster, it's like mm -hmm. you're, you're 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 meeting General Levy for the first of time. Of course, of course. And for me, for me, it was like that. For me, I did, and predominantly it was your London dancehall or ragga mm. artist, right? So. Like your Navi, like your um, 
like all of them, man, you, you demon boys, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. yeah, yeah. You, you were just, you, you didn't necessarily. I even want to go as far as to say Congo Natty when he was Rebel MC and oh them my, time there. Yes, hundred percent. Right? So you're a kid, and you're just hearing all of these little. Could the only way I can explain it, it's like you're going home, but you've reached your yard. It all seems familiar. But there's just like a different fridge, a different t- like everything inside is just different because it's yeah. jungle and it's and it's and even more so because jungle would I would say was a little bit before me, before my real time time of of getting not necessarily inf- yes influenced mm. but understanding because mm. I wasn't raving your age I wasn't them kind of ages there but I was certainly hearing it and kind of thinking raw and then when it did the, another remix and came with the garage vibes because mm. remember them it's, it's the same old samples. It's the way all them tunes there came back on the garage. And that's when I was like, oh, mm. this this is deep. Mm. This whole UK sound is deep. And and it's true. It's, it's just true. it just kept on moving for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um when you're you me, you, you mentioned that the not being quite old enough to go to the raves or at least go to them as you know frequently as you wanted to. Mm. Um also maybe demographically you were from a different area where you make you know, London was popping, mm. areas of Birmingham were here and there. But doesn't that make the mind wonder and make you want to do it even more? The fact that of you course. haven't got there. You're, of you're you're thinking these things. You're of thinking, course. what's it like in that place? What, well, I wanna be there. Bro, I so wish and to this day. To this day, I, I will always joke with my older cousins and that and just say, I wish I was raving them times because I look at, and I'm sure you do as well, mm. you look at that footage on YouTube and you see people in the jungle raves when jungle was popping oh, and you go, mate. yo, just to have been part of that environment. Because when, when mm. I, I listened, I chat to Ragga Twins. Imagine, these guys were our heroes. Heroes, right? Ragga Twins, come on. You chat to Ooh. Ragga Twins. The other day, Congo was on the phone with mm. you, you know what I mean? You're Sean and B's, your navigators, them man, they phone me up and they chat. You know what I mean? We chat and boom, and you think, rah, like you, man, mm. when you, man, was shelling a 2,000 capacity, 5,000 capacity rave, and you, man, just get on the mic and just say one word and the whole place shell down. <laughs> Yo, I just wish yeah. I could have been, I could have been <laughs> a fly too. on the wall to just see <laughs> that, man. Because I think like that's an unspoken era of UK music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now, your drillers are doing what they're doing and they're doing mad numbers, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Your UK hip-hop, this version of UK hip-hop yeah, now is doing mad numbers. For sure. And we know they're filling out the festivals and so on, but there's just that unspoken era where I just wish it was um, certainly shown more mm. and, and, and displayed more. There's just more about it out there, man. It's funny. I, I, you know, sometimes I switch over to Sky Arts and I see some, like, old um, ba- concerts that are going on and stuff and I see, like, younger versions of the people we know now mm. and had we had the technology to, uh, like we do now, like, readily available. We, I think we're spoiled for how, how much content we can, yeah. s- you know. It's almost like you grow with your, your, your artists now mm-hmm. a lot more than you used to back then. But there was something... Tell me what you think about this as a theory. Well, actually, it's, it's just me amusing. The idea of, uh, I don't know, uh, art is uh, mis- kind of misspent on the youth when you see like uh, young people performing and going for it. I think we as audiences take for granted though because as people get older, it's like, it's not that you're not seeing the greatness, but like the energy of the mm. youth, the energy of that time, yeah. the energy of the rave when it was incep- in, in its inception. Mm-hmm. I agree, I'm with you. I'm like, yo, like, you can never, you can never have those feelings back. As, as you grow up, you don't, you can't experience that same feeling, can you, you? You'll never be 15 again going to a rave for the very first time in your life and, and just going into this big place and going, <gasps> Just having all of those firsts, mm. you'll you'll never be that kind of age again. And I always say, even the youngers that I talk to now, I always say to them, enjoy, enjoy as much as you can. Totally. Enjoy these years, man. And you know, and this ain't supposed to be a political party, political broadcast or anything, man. And, and I know there's a lot of madness going on on the streets mm. nowadays, but try enjoy enjoy these times because oh you're gonna sit gosh. back and look and go, you know what, raw. When man was 15 or when man was 18 and going out with a madness in the rave, man mm. should have just been enjoying that. Man. Yeah, uh, without quite... Carl, can you imagine? I mean, you've you've got a wealth of experience in this, you know, over your career span. And um, there's just moments that you can never... I sit back sometimes and I think, oh, yeah, look, you know, I'm, I'm not old, older, but I know enough to know enough. These things shift. They make... they These experiences make you. Yeah. And looking back and I'm like, yeah, oh, mouth. 
kind of glad I did that. There was a hesitancy, maybe a one or two points, but hey, I did it. That was cool. Yeah. You must have loads of those experiences. Yeah, uh, definitely, man. Um, I think one of the main ones for me, certainly with 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 the experience of saying I'm, I'm glad I did. Mm. Um, so I did um, a tune called Wheel and Stop with uh, Basement Jacks. Yeah, a uh, whole type. Yeah, basement we jacks. got Basement Jacks. I'm never feeling this. All day. Um, and obviously... We're talking now mid noughties or oh, probably oh, 2010, 2012, them kind of times there. And uh, maybe a little bit a little bit earlier than that. Big tune, by the way. If you don't know about Wheel and Stop. Thank you. Um, and they kind of hit me up and said, yo, we're going to um, Korea and Japan. And I was just like, Korea and Japan don't sound like my wave, man. Because we're doing, we're, doing we're doing this festival called Fiji, Fiji Rocks, right? Huge, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> and I'm there hesitating. I'm hesitating. Like, oh, I don't know, man. Going to Japan and yo, I'm a, I don't know about this thing. Anyway, eventually I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? You know? And I go and we did Fiji Rocks, right? Headline. Right. And it was the first time I've ever done a stage where you look out and you see people. And it's people and people and people over a hill and it's just mad. And bro... I did wheel and stop and the crowd, the whole crowd sang it back to me. And that was a moment where I thought, chills. Yo, this is, yeah, you know, obviously it's the deepness of Basement Jackson, how big they are as well. But it was just like those kind of moments where you think, nah, I was hesitant. And then mm -hmm. after that, I was just like, nah, I bought it. Wh wh whichever festival it is, let's go. I'm not a festival guy. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, a, kind of I'm a city guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. When people, so when it's raining like how it is and we know it's going to be muddy. Dang me. I'm not a fan of that. No tent, man. <laughs> no tent. I'm not a fan of that, but bro, sometimes those are the greatest experiences. I've done Glastonbury yeah. where the mud's down into you know to your kneecaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I'm glad because now I can sit back and talk about it. Mm, for sure. You know, um, we did Glastonbury when me and T did Glastonbury when it was like one of the hottest summers ever. I think that was like 2010. We're up to you. Hold tight, toddler. We got toddler. I think it was like 2010, 2012. One of those. Whichever one was a World Cup, Germany. Right? And it was just hot, 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 hot. Oh, no, the one was it 2011 or something. Was it one of those? So. One of those, one of those. Yeah, okay. uh, World Cup Germany, anyway, hot, hotter than hell. Mm -hmm. And I, again, it w that was, I think that was my first Glastonbury experience, right? So that's my first Glastonbury experience. I've never gone before. I've gone there. It's the hottest summer of the wherever. Yeah. And loved it, right? So I went back the next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> when I say rain, bro. <laughs> but still, it's one of those. Slept in my car. They wouldn't let me back in. You know, it was mad. But, you know, again, you just have to... The whole thing is, while you're young, enjoy it. Do it all. Do it all. Do everything you can legally, of course. Mm -hmm. um, enjoy the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you sit back and even now, look at the last 18 months with COVID. Most of us been in our yards, right? Makes you appreciate life. Oh. Appreciate life, man. Um, let's uh, let's stay on the basement, Jacks, because yeah. um, around the same time, I think I did the tune. Oh my gosh, with them. Yeah. Right. So with Vula, um, hold tight, Vula. We got Vula, man. Talk to me about your experience in the studio with Basement Jacks, because it, everyone has. It's almost like the, 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 it's like a Prince mythology of like how people, how you, how they encouraged and uh, um, uh, fed out your creative energy, because you know these guys are they they're like scientists. Aren't they, they are scientists, man. They are scientists. It was, um, I think, with my experience with them, because they 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 sent me the rhythm. And said, oh, do you want to jump on this with him, right? Um, it may be something, it may be nothing, right? One of those mm -hmm. ones. But we, we was all vibing together in a way. And they were doing a few things in, the, oh, where was that spot called in Brixton? That was the old church. Um, um, the Mass. The Mass, yeah. yeah. Um, Felix used to play in the Mass occasionally. And we started chatting and boom, bang. Anyway, mm -hmm. here's a rhythm, do what you want. Did what I, you know, did what I was feeling on the rhythm. And they came back and they were like, yo, kind of like this. This was after me and MJ Cole did a tune mm -hmm. called um, Oh Na uh, Ayo, 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 we call that tune. Tough. And that was playlisted all over the place. Um, so anyway, did what I did on the rhythm. Then they called me back and said, you know what, this could be, this could be a vibe. Let's, let's, let's try a few things. So we go in the studio and it's like, okay, try it this style. Try it this way. Try it this way. And we tried like everything and kind of eventually went back to the original. Mm -hmm. But it was all a case of, it was one of the first times as well, definitely, that I got that whole vibe of try everything. Mm. And even if you go back to the original, 
and that's the one that works. At least you've tried everything to see, you know, that level of perfection. You've, you've maxed out. You've maxed of course, out. you've maxed that's out. What, yeah. um, that's that was really my experience with them. Um, you know, pretty good. Um, I think it was Felix or it may, maybe Simon that said to me, "Right, why would a Jamaican buy your music?" I was like, "Bro, because I'm sick." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he really threw it out there. <laughs> no, nah, but you know what? It made me think. Yeah. You know, and and I like that. I like that level of honesty. I like that. That whole vibe and just being on the road with them was such such a vibe, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they wanna. Uh, Felix is like, and I love Felix the bits for this because you go away learning a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, like he's up against the window, like blowing, you know, mouth is against the window, like going, yeah, oh, come on, get, 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 more, 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 more. Really exercising your uh, your uh, creative creativity, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. What's your um? What's your uncle think of all this? Because like, bearing in mind, you know, from the source, you know, he was already prolific with um, working alongside some of the biggest in, so, in reggae. Yeah. So um, for my unk. My unk, it's so it's it was really interesting because I remember giving my unk a CD. Wow, we're going back now, isn't it? CDs. <laughs> wow. Um, I, <laughs> and my unk said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll check it." This was when he, he came over on tour with Shaggy, right? So big, it was NEC Arena, mm. big Wimbledon, well, Wembley, whatever. And um, gave him a t- I gave him a CD. Sorry, and I was like, "Yo, unk, check it out, man. Give, give, me, give me some advice. Give me some advice." And he checked it out and passed it on to Shaggy and everybody was sitting down there kind of like, and he he was proud, but at the same time, because they weren't living in the UK, there wasn't, I don't, I don't want to say there wasn't an understanding, there was an understanding and an appreciation for good music, but mm. an understanding of a scene that was so versatile mm. as the UK was, which is, you're not, a, you're not a bashment artist, you're not a dancehall artist, you're an artist, right? So mm. you can go on anything. There just wasn't that, there wasn't that connection yet. Now, later on, people like Sean Paul, et cetera, mm, um, yeah. jumped on all the different rhythms. And now, it, and even Shaggy himself, now it kind of makes sense and it gels because mm. everything is coming together. Um, but as you will know yourself, um, if we're talking mid noughties, it was just so segregated, wasn't it? It was <laughs> yeah. like, you're the beatbox guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can't do anything other than hip hop. Yeah. And if you try to, we're going to try and push you back into that box as quickly as possible. Totally. So you have to kind of push yourself and say, okay, yeah. well, and it's almost like each time you got to reinvent yourself. But yeah, you're, yeah, not, yeah. you're just doing the same thing on a different, in a different way. I'll right? go as far as say you've got to shed your skin because a lot of people, even if you do manage to get back in the 90s, of course, if you were to get yourself an early noughties to a degree, you get yourself out of that kind of, that kind of corner that they put you in, mm. they don't like it neither. No, no. <sighs> they don't like that. You managed to diversify. Where did that come? Like how? Because the reason why I asked about your uncle was because of you. You mentioned that Simon said why were black, black would why were black audiences like your reggae, mm. and I'm like, well, but you come from like the, the most solid of heritages, you know. Mm. And when you see the way that raga reggae has been. As well, it's gone through such a journey up to now. Wow, like you know, mm-hmm. Afrobeat and everything is just we'll get into the collaborations with you and Roscoe in a minute, yeah, yeah. But they must, it, it must be running so fast for them, they must be thinking, what, what is this now? Like, what is this, and where does the DNA fault lines go in? Absolutely, I think there's you know, there's definitely that purist kind of mentality mm. with it all, and even when you go back to the Jaxes and 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 so on, and 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 and, and move it backwards. There were there were just those steps, right? That the, this was reggae, this was raga, this was such and such. This is house, da da da, mm. right? This is jungle and so on. And where I think I got a step to, like you look at the work with me and Toddler, mm. to a certain extent, um, we kind of just felt this is one music, you know, and it blends together. And we always saw this whole picture of everything meshing together mm. and started trying to create that. Um, because I didn't want to be a dancer like it says enough dancer like it's out there yeah, yeah. and plus as we mentioned before we got the Birmingham thing where you got like a bit of hip hop in you you got a bit of dancer in you you got a little bit of everything in you so why not make a sound that 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 kind of encapsul- encapsulates mm-hmm. that and you know if you go forward now and you look at westerns mm-hmm. you know or a mist and all of these guys mm-hmm. that are doing they're doing what we were doing mm-hmm. and I'm not saying we created their style because obviously they, they, they've done their own thing in their own way but it's what we started to kind of, yeah. we started getting the potato masher and trying to mash it all together and make one sound because that's the one sound that we saw as UK music, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and we weren't trying to be anything else from anywhere else. We weren't trying to recreate different sounds. We were just trying to create this one uniform sound yeah. that was just, represents everything in the UK to us. It's actually bonkers when you, just as you, you were explaining it there, my, my mind went off and I go, wow. 
There's plenty of, I mean, flowers where flowers do, because that mashing up of, it's so fresh and new. It's it, at the time, it's like, why hasn't this been done before? We're doing it. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a given now, and it's kind of crazy that we could go along with it as if it was a given because it was always the idea that there were, you had in mind. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mad. It, time, it's time, everything's timeless. That's of what course. It is. Oh, oh, one hundred percent. Everything's timeless, man. And I'm so happy to see it now. I'm so happy to see everything working together, and so happy to listen listen to stuff now and and hear garage influences mm. and go. Oh, okay, yeah, I can trace that back. I can trace that back. I can see where the you know where the Z biases were involved in this, and and it may not have <laughs> necessarily been involved in this particular tune right now where it is, but yeah. I can see the tree. You know, yeah. I really came up in the where it really started to pop for me um, was in the dubstep era, right? So dubstep started to happen. You had your screams, you had your bangers and all of these guys. And it was on these rhythms that were just so bass heavy. And all I wanted to do was jump on those mm -hmm. kind of rhythms. And again, it was so uniquely UK. Even though we call it dubstep, even though you could feel the reggae in it, it was just so UK, bro. And, and I think the lineage, the, 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 the lining, and like you said, the, the, the faults, the, the everything, the history mm. is so rich mm. that now when you look at it, it's I can't help but feel proud of the scene, bro. Oh, bro, I was just gonna say every time, see, I, I you know, you listen to some like rinse, old rinse grime tape packs, or you, yeah, you go down that dubstep route. Sometimes, and I'm not sure if it's nostalgia entirely, but sometimes when a tune comes on. I just get so fucking proud. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that sound. I forgot about the esky, the esky icy sound. I forget about that snare that you always used to. I'm proud of it. I'm not, it's not even mine. I'm proud of it. You yeah. Know? No, you have to be. I was chatting to a friend of mine the other day, and she was going to uni at the time. Um, like grime was really popping, and so. so she, she was studying something like bioscience or something. So she she probably didn't have much time to be focusing on the grime scene. You know what I mean? To be real. Um, and so she missed out on a lot of the greats. So your canos and so on. Yeah, heard P's and Q's maybe, but didn't hear the, 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 mm. the other stuff. And she's kind of retracing now and going and kind of hitting me up and saying, Raw, this song's sick, that song's sick, da, 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 da. And I'm uh. like, yeah, because these artists were so dope in their time, and of course, you know, um, gets and etc. Mm -hmm. They still got their moment, but now they're legendary status, right? Yeah. Now they're at status where, and again, sorry, I'm banging on, but no, when we talk no. about pride, we talk about looking at the scene. We talk about seeing man like gets fill out a stadium, you know, and then you look at Stormzy. Yeah, no, no, you know what I mean, and yeah. you just like, oh, okay, look at look at the levels of how these things have moved. The family tree of it all as well. It's like how did it's of an course. Yeah, it moves like a, it moves like water, and like you. That's what's crazy. It's like, okay, there's a poster boy for every scene and every season. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you really break, break down the, the timeline and what certain thing, it's back to the potato masher. It's back yeah. to the, the original yeah. concept. Yeah, the original. I, you know, one of the things that make me so proud again, oh man, we're talking so much pride, yeah. um, is when you look at the one extra, you must have seen the one extra freestyle and it had Jamie... I think Skeppy was in it, and you had um, General Levy. Yeah, all in, uh, that all just them. blew my mind. Like, brother, when you see all of them together and just saying, "Yo, Levy, you're the general." Yeah, you know what I mean. And just <laughs> him doing this, and everybody's just on it, and you're like, "I like." Man, look at that. Get goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah, it just says it. It shows um, t t fault lines. It shows uh, respect. It mm -hmm. shows co uh, camaraderie within a. Yeah. Um, and you know, both you and me, we we don't we don't we've never bucked like that no. on a live enough. But we know. We yeah, of course. It's the eye of, you know, aware. Definitely mm. aware, man. Um, it's it's a beautiful thing, bro. To be honest yeah. with you, definitely a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, I think as far as the scene is concerned, as far as the the potato masher and putting everything together, I'm I'm just kind of sitting back and looking and seeing, and I'm happy. And even with yourself as well. I'm happy to have been a piece of the puzzle. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you are as well. Contributive, yeah. You contributed to, to to what we have today. And yeah, man, I love it. And I, I hear a lot of elders talking about, oh, man, it's not the same as it. It's never gone. It's not supposed to be. No, it's not. You know what I mean? If, like, if you got, if it don't make sense, it wasn't made for you. Nah. 
in the words of Company Flow, it's all made for you. <laughs> but you know, that's what this the beauty of what we have today, man. It's just like if you can appreciate it, mm. I don't like every single new song yeah. that I hear. Of course not. But like you said, mm. some of it wasn't made for me. You mm. know what I mean? And and that's okay. That's yeah, yeah. okay as well. Um, but for the most part, I can appreciate the musicality and the creativity mm. of it all, and that's where we are. One island. One island. Why do you think it is that why do you think it is that the industry is um Actually, no, the industry isn't actually that embracing. But why do you think the scene of of uh, of the UK is so powerful? It it it's like a it's like an uh, it's like a uh, it's like a developing pad for mm. new ideas. And then and sometimes the exporting of American genres go it like drill, for instance, or hip hop itself, punk go go into the machine, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we're like, hold on. I'll, I'll fix this one, and we export it back out there as like a new f- engine. I mean, machine. Um, I think. I mean, I don't know the exact answer, but I think a huge portion of this comes from the amount of influences that we have over here, and the fact that we're so accepting to the influences, right? So, um, you know, if you look at a mist, just to use mist as an example. Mm-mm-mm. You can tell that he's watched more than one Bollywood movie, bro. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell that he's been to school and he's had a mesh of cultures Definitely. because of the references yeah. that he puts across, <laughs> yeah. right? So there's that. Then you got the Afrobeat influences and so on and so on. So it moves all the way down the line, mm. right? So when when we get something that's American, whereas in America, and I'm sure the Americans will accept this, it is quite like that's your thing. You do your mm. thing over there. That's not quite hip hop, right? Okay, that's mumble rap. That's not hip hop. That's you know what I mean. And there's that separation. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. here we're like, we'll take that, have that, that. Okay, we like that as well. Yeah, and yeah. any one person on their playlist right now, on anybody's Spotify or Tidal or Apple Music playlist, they have got at least five to six different genres of music. Yeah. I can almost guarantee that anybody in the UK. For every different occasion, from yeah. ex- tr- gym exercises to work related absolutely motivations, absolutely. And, and that's the mad thing, isn't it? You go to the work party. Uh, all right, yeah. Let me just put You like that hip-hop stuff? No, 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 I got something for you. <laughs> all that. You know what I mean? It's like everybody's into different kinds of music, man. And I think that's the beauty. And and so, because with that being in mind, if I sit down, definitely you as a producer, sit down there with your creative hat on, you're going to go, you're going to draw upon those influences. Draw on it. And then you, you, whatever you give back out. Yeah. Of course. What do you, um, what do you look for in, because, you know... You've worked with so many people, particularly producers. Like, what do you look for in the in the beat? What's the thing? What's the driving force behind your lyric? What's the thing that draws that the demon out? <laughs> Seriously, what's the one? Baseline, man. Um, I think if it's got baseline, that that a really sick baseline and um, a beat that gives me enough space, then all day long, mm. all day long, that's me. Um, but it's definitely got to be that bass line. When I'm always waiting for that bass to kick in, and yeah, Ruska can tell you. But you know, what I mean, we go, we you have that intro, the intro beat, and I'm like, oh, bro, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for those eight bars to go so I can hear that bass drop. When that bass drops, yeah, from that, yeah, I'm in. Is that sound system influencer. I think so, bro. Mm. I think so. It's always the case, though, isn't it? Because mm. you know, it's a marriage. Yeah. It's a marriage, man. I'd argue, uh, Ruska's. Beats. Oh man, there's so many layers to his beats because I'm such a fan. I love the fact that sometimes it's the it's the things you don't hear mm-hmm. that actually there's, there is space to his. I mean, sometimes it's just drums, but then you put the headphones on, it's like there's an 808 going there. You're just like, oh shit, he's really thinking of the club. He's gonna fuck some people up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's the thing with Ruska. Ruska's like Ruska sent me an instrumental. Um, and I listened to it and I had a lot of madness, not madness going on, but just had um, commitment, beat commitments, you know what I mean? So I kind of listened to it and I was like, yeah, this is sick, Raska, but I'm going to get back to you. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think about a month or so, I'd gone and he messaged me again. He's like, yo, Cero, you know, Raska, mm. yo, Cero, you on this or what? I'm like, yeah, 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 cool. Mm-hmm. Then went back to it and I listened to it. <laughs> Imagine, I listened to it the second time, second time I listened to it. I heard something completely different to what I heard the first time. Dropped everything. Dropped everything. Said, nah, nah, it has to be done right now. And that song went on to be our first release together. See, he does that. He yeah. Does that. Right. Okay. What was it? What was the difference this time from that time? Was it just a mindset thing? 
It could have been a mindset thing, and I did listen to it on a different system as well. Uh, um, and the bass just kicked my neck back in, man. I was just like, Rah! I did I not hear that the yeah, first yeah, time? Yeah. But it was also a mindset because I had so much on the first time, right? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. So there you go. Roscoe don't make beats for your, your, your speaker on your phone. He makes stuff for sound system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't. It's... I got a question for you, bro. Actually, <laughs> speaking of that, yeah, for it. The kids nowadays, yeah. um, they listen to everything through their phone, right? Yeah. On loudspeaker on their phone. Um, do you think something's lost in that, or do you think nowadays music is made specifically? So, if I'm an 18 year old kid producer, I'm making it because I'm thinking you're listening to that through your phone. I think they do. I yeah. think I honestly think they do. I think there's a, a, a there's a lot more um, lack of attention to detail for that reason. Because, you know, with all the sample packs being the way they are, I'm, I'm presuming, like, just chuck, 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 tweak, tweak, tweak. It's kind of, it's by numbers a little bit more. Mm. And if they're listening on their phone, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to think to myself, well, there's a generation right now that have missed a year and a half plus of any club life. Yeah. So they, that's a generation that are going to have to re, they're going to have to reverse engineer ever going into a club. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, yo. you're right. Because that being 18 and being allowed to go into a club legally, you haven't had that. If you're if you're a kid that's just finished uni, well, some of them are school. 20 now. Yeah, they missed yeah. two years of being at a <laughs> club festival. The works, so it's it's a bit mad. You're right. You're gonna have to reverse engineer that whole experience. Yeah, and they're probably listening to music <laughs> with proper bass and going, the fuck is this? <laughs> 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 They're gonna be there, just like they would have had. A, they would have dumped on the fucking floor, thinking yeah. the the bass on the, 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 the brown notes is real. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, but um, yeah, man. So as far as you know, going back to Raska, we kind of came out and we 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 done we done some bits, and then it became a let's do an EP. Mm. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, cool. Let's just let's, let's just crack on, and we just we we kind of put that together in pretty much no time at all. And as you know, when the when the chemistry's right things just fall together. It's not like work, it's just bang, 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 bang. Mm. And we're so seasoned in what we do now mm. that it's just a simple one treat, you know what I mean? Mm. He's, he speaks very highly of you and um, he's one of those kind of characters that he, he don't really fuck with people that ain't on the same, in the same yeah. circle, on the same wave. Yeah. He's like, he's that, he's that energy. Yeah. And yeah, that, that holds true with you as well, you know, and I'm, I'm finding even in this conversation, it's, it's actually, you've got a level of uh, commitment that you want to, you, on observation, mm -hmm. you, uh, you've got laser focus on what you, and you know what you like, and mm. you know what you want. Mm -hmm. You have a lane and you like to, to steer within that lane. Mm. I have a, <clears throat> you see, I agree with you about having a lane. I think more importantly though, it's not a lane that is dictated to by the genre of music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is it's also, it's if your, your thing's popping, you know, for instance, like, Ruska does funky, right? We know Ruska to do funky. Mm -hmm. However, the EP, our straight rum EP, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a funky EP. Mm. It was an EP with somebody, of two people that connected um, creatively, mm. and he did what he does best, mm. I did what I do best, and we created this kind of slightly genre bending because you go all the way down to 105 mm. on some of those tunes and mm -hmm. all the way back up to 125, 130, you know what I mean? So... It's kind of creative, you know, we just need to be, I need to work with somebody that's on that wavelength that, you know, sometimes when you hear people, sometimes producers will hit me up and go, I got a rhythm perfect for you. And I'm always a bit like, okay. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, you know, and usually I'm, I'd go back and we'd probably listen to three or four and they'd be like, I wouldn't have chose that one for you. I'm like, well, that's the one that. I can tell, what were you thinking when you built that rhythm? You know what I mean? Oh, it's just this and that. And you're like, yeah, man, that one there's firing. So a lot of times it's it's literally what grabs me, yeah. but allows me to be me. It's interesting because <laughs> when you drop anything on a track, distinctively it's your voice. It's, mm. it's, it's the John Coltrane Hornet. You know, it's the it's that you know, it's that kind of level. Me. You know what I mean? You, but you can hear. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you know, mm. and that lane. Um, it's 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 un it's unmovable. So when you're in those situations where a uh, producer, because yeah, there are some songs that by default you would kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But of course. there is the mood and the reasons and the mo it's sometimes certain songs just take you and just like no nah, man, you know what this one here, 
totally fits. It's your mood, it's the vibe, it's everything, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's why, you know, even just to go back again to the Raska EP, like what I did in my zone, you know what I mean? It was just like, that was it. I was mm. in my, like, you know, spiritually as well, from a spiritual level, when you're creating music, you're just in that you're mm. in that arena, you're in that zone. And that's where when In My Zone came about. And then I was literally going Trinidad a few days later. I mean, did the video out there, you know what I mean? Because mm. it's just like, zone. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So that's that's just the perfectness from from that. And that's what so I look for. you were going on holiday and then, and then... Yeah. So um, as far as going to Trinidad, we do um, boat parties at Trinidad Carnival. Right. Well, we do boat parties all around, all around the world. To be honest, with rum and bass, yeah. my, my other thing. Come on. Um. So we do Notting Hill boat parties, Trinidad, Kingston, Jamaica, etc., etc., etc. You know, et the DNA is super fucking real on the podcast. <laughs> all right, we'll fuck around. Exactly. But anyway, so we we kind of I was so voiced it for Raska. He liked it. Said to him, "Look, going away, going to Trinidad, um, to go do our annual party, um." I'm just gonna do. A, I'm gonna do a video too. He's like, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm like, bam, 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 bam. Done the video. Give it back to us. And, and, that, and everything's organic, right? That's sick. It just works. That's sick. See, if you was on a normal holiday, your missus, my missus would have been screwing. She's like, we'll be we coming all this way, come all this way just to do your fucking music video, mate. Is that what we're doing? She'd be fucking. She'd be it, on me. It was business work, though, bruh. <laughs> hey, listen, it's the charm of the MC, the host, the hype man. You know what I mean? He, he finessed his way out of any situation like that. <laughs> We did it, man. We did it. But now, nah, you know, it's just everything just has to be kind of organic as well. Because when things feel forced, bro, it's like mm. it's long. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, and sometimes you got, to, you know, you can push a circle through a square hole. But sometimes you just gotta, yeah. You know when you, you know, you know when you're doing the right thing because it's, it's 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 moving with you. You're working. Of course. It's like it's natural, isn't it? it feels natural progression. I, I completely agree. I mean, and that's where most of my lasting kind of musical relationships have come from. Like me and T. We go back 20 years now. 20 years? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, give or take one or two, but it's not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and that started with um, the fact that I used to go up to Sheffield quite a bit. Me and him, we, we were in a group together, right? Small Arms Fire. So it was four of us, two producers, two MCs. And... Mad. There's singles out there. There's small arms fire singles and twelves out there that you can get your hands on. First, very first, Todd Latte Productions. Tells, tells, come on, man. I need to check um, this shit. I'm so, always sending you links, Todd. Like, come on, give me some links my way. Come on. <laughs> here you go. Um, and then we kind of, Todd and I kind of kicked off, and, and we were the youngest ones in the group as well. And we kind of developed this link of wanting to make that mashup, like we spoke yeah, about, yeah, you know, yeah, wanting yeah, yeah. to create that kind of, and we just had this vision of, Right, okay, if we can try and recreate recreate this stuff. So we'd sit down. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking about it. So I'd get all of these old school dancehall VHSs in, right? Yeah. And you know like how a boxer watches old tapes of other boxers? Yeah. Like maybe a Dempsey or whatever. We were watching old school sh- um, Supercat, Ninja Man, etc. Together, we were sitting down. Like, okay, right, look at when he does that. What an that. amazing idea. Butcher Banton. Da, 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 da. We're just watching all these old videos, right? Training. Mind training. Training. <gasps> training. 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 You All guys right, cool. Were on it. We're gonna build, we're gonna build, we're gonna build. And we'd go to the studio and we'd try this and we'd try that. Some doesn't work, some does work. Da 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 da. And start creating this sound. Man. You know? And eventually we, we move on and we move on and we move on. And obviously we get to the point where we are now where Toddler's a multi platinum producing producer. Yeah, hey look, come um, on. Got, Tom. <laughs> and you know, we just it was, again, like you say, you sit down and you look at those times there, all of that training. I'm sure you spent hours and hours and hours just beatboxing, just yeah. getting shit together, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Making sure things sounded right. And how to project this when you're in, you know what I mean? How to project this particular song that we're doing and recreate this madness that we've got in the studio now out to when we're doing Reading Festival. Mm. You know, when we're doing, when we're in Manchester in front of 50,000 people and we're doing this particular festival, how are we going to do snow bombing? You know, how is this going to translate to your ordinary Radio One listener? This is before we was on Radio One. Your ordinary, regular Radio One listener that ain't really checking for Bashment. Because remember, in them days, it's still, we're still not where we are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where your average, anybody in the UK can probably name five dancers. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was like that with beatboxing as well. Like, you know, getting a cab. You don't mm. know. Cabby don't know what beatboxing is. Nah. You have to explain like you're reinventing the wheel. And I'm, I'm sure it was pretty much the same back yeah. then. Yeah. It's, it's that. So how do you get to translate that to, 
to 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 the, your regular ordinary nine to five Joe Blow that's gone out for the weekend or gone out for the week to flipping have a few lagers and enjoy mm-hmm. themselves. And we figured out a way, bro. You know what I mean? Ooh, we just yeah. figured out a way to make it happen. And it's so great, man. Yeah. And I don't even know why I started telling you. You see what you're doing? You see what you're doing? Oh, I don't yeah. even know why we got there. But, you know, it is just one of those things, man. Oh, yeah, I was talking about the chemistry. The chemistry has to be right with the people. And so the people I've got, um, the longer working relationships, yeah. with, you will, you kind of will see. So a man like a Ruska, a man like a toddler that I've worked, mm. you know, these guys are the people that I've worked with for the lungs yeah. you know um, you see that a lot for me some reason why though and just retrain some of what you just said there because that's super interesting like sometimes when you start a project it's almost not so much a mission brief but if you know you've got like a reason why mm. that just changes that it's almost like we need to make this mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a case of yeah let's do it and shoot the shit see what happens no you, you've got a reason There's yeah a, it's almost like it borders it's, this is for the Culture, the culture, future culture. Yeah. And there is always, I think that's probably the why. And like you said, mm-hmm. and, and that's probably the reason. And that's how we, we kind of get to where we are, where mm-hmm. it's like, you don't know at that precise moment in time, oh, we're doing this for the future culture. You just know at that precise moment in time, there's that overarching, we must do this. Mm-hmm. It's necessary to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, wherever that leads in the future is wherever it leads. But right now, in this moment in time, in this particular cycle, we need to do this. Mm. And that's always where, you know, it's gone for me. Mm. Even when we did, um, when we ended up on, we, I ended up on uh, Black Butter. We did the first, one of the first singles on Black Butter. Ooh, who, hold tight Black Butter, yeah. With, I did it with Navigator, me, Navigator, Illaman. Um, oh, hold tight Illaman. Your mind has been blown on that one. That was a, yeah. That's a big line up right there. Bro. Illaman, such a sick MC. Tomb Crew. Aye. 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 That actually was your... That was quite a defining time as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Tomb Crew era. Mm. Bro, like... And that's what I mean when I talk about Black Butter and and the amount of, you know, crews that they've had come off Mm. on Black Butter now. And Black Butter's like one of the biggest labels, independent labels in, in the UK. But when you think about it, it's like... I always just think... like I just remember Henry... Head of Black Bar. I don't. He's, is he still? I think he's still head of Black Bar. Right. I just remember him being there and it's me, Ilaman, and Navi, and Navi, and we all dressed up for this particular video, mm. right? Um, I was a mad professor. Navigator was a navigator, the pilot. Mm. Ilaman was a pirate, and we're in this. Video, and it's just like that again was that era. It's like that we're, we're going into the gold. I would call it the golden, golden era, era of, yeah. of our time now, where it was like maybe oh nine to maybe 15. Oh, man. 09 that, to yeah. 2015 was that, like, that whole era of, they've slow, they used to call it, um, what did they call it? Uh, 120 Jungle. I don't know if you ever heard that term. No. They were calling that 120 Jungle because oh, they, they kind of slowed it down, but the vibe was all there, you know what I mean? And and then, of course, it got this term bass music, right? Mm. You, remember, you remember everybody yeah, was calling yeah, it bass yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. But that was Heart that era. Broken. Jeez, kind of that, that, them times them there, times. bro. Come on. Flipping yo-yo on a Thursday <laughs> night. Oh, them. Big up Leo Greenslade. How tight, oh, how tight Seb, come on. Hang tight, Ooh. Seb. Seb, man. Yo, that's what I'm saying. It's like, Seb, chew, big up yourself. Seb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's that, like that era as well, bro. Man, we ain't even spoke about that. No, th- this is the first time it's even been brought up on podcast, bro. Jeez. And I'm going to go online and find all the bits to throw into the edit while we're talking about <laughs> it. Because I'll tell you, like, that's going to be, that's going to be lovely. I love that era. Mm-hmm. I love that era. Um, very west, but but I think I think some of the guys live around here. Actually, to be fair, some of yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Um, I think rudimental. Well, no, no, rudimental at east, like me, kind of. Mm. Um, then you had a uh, man. Matt's gonna kill me. What is their official name now? Because they went out went on to be a house crew. I'm not even gonna talk no more. Mm. But we got Matt. Matt, you know who you are. Mm, mm, um, flipping day. Black Butter definitely did a lot for bringing that scene in. Really pulled it through, huh? Really did, man. Really did. Um, and again, just a scene that, again, I'm happy to just be a little, a little cog in the wheel, man. I can't say country. that. Seriously, I, you, you know, you got to be, you got to be cool to be cool, bro. Like you've, you've <laughs> you got to be cool to be cool. I love that <laughs> shit, bro. You got you flip, you, you know, you flip, and you're able to morph within these things in these scenes and genres and people and collaborations and stuff that's that's 
I mean, that seems like what for ducks back to you, but but it ain't easy for some people. Like, what's the fucking secret, man? There's no secret. Uh, the only secret I I can ever come up with, bro, is just enjoying music and working with people that enjoy your music. And and I say this to people a lot, yeah, and even people that I work with now, I say, I tell them that I'm fans of theirs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's not a gas up somebody thing. It's just generally. You have to be a fan of the people that you're working with. Dows, I agree with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or else it just don't, it's not, it doesn't feel natural. It don't feel no. right, man. I'm, 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 bro, we just mentioned Nafi, Illiman, Illiman, sorry. You know, bro, there's some people probably watching this podcast that don't know who they are. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to the artist, man. It's no disrespect to the people that don't know who they are. Please try to find out, yeah, though. YouTube's reason, a good thing. Yeah, man, sure. Um, But I'm a fan. You know what I mean? I'm 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 yeah, a Dave. fan uh, to the point where a man like David Boomer gets on the phone and says to me, "Yo, I'm David Boomer." You may not, bro. I know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? As soon as you spoke, <laughs> I, I know who you are. You know what I mean? Like Shawnee T. Like I remember being a kid listening to Black Twang albums, bro, Ugh. and hearing Shawnee T on them. So imagine when I meet this brother, Shawnee T. Yo, Shawnee, what are you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see me perform and he comes over. Yo, you sick? You know, you all right? No, I'm, just, I'm just in awe. Yeah. I hope that Dub Pistols as well. Oh, too. my gosh. We got Dub Pistols. All day. Um, and that probably for me, a Shawnee T, um, was probably one of the greatest moments in my whole career, bro. When a man like Shawnee comes over and says, yo, you're sick. And I, you're a youth. And you're like, oh, okay, damn. And then you get a phone call. Yo, you want to jump on a tune? No. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Shawnee, man, a big up. Legend, Shawnee man. needs to come on the podcast. We have been trying to arrange it, man. He's just, you know, and that, right, that Black Twang album, the first Black Twang, it was Dead Work Southeast, wasn't it? That was first one was Dead Work Southeast. Oh. I got introduced to Twang. Now, remember, I'm outside of London, so mm-hmm. I'm going to use that as an excuse. When it came to 19 Long Time, right? That tune. Uh-huh. Oy. So, <gasps> that album. Game Changer. Game Changer. And then after that, you went on to... Um, why is it so rotten? rotten. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that he, might have been he, on the same album. I no, no, it was on the same album. It was on Because yeah. Banksy done that, the second, al- second album cover. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. What? Yeah. Oh, Banksy my God. Banksy done the work the fa- Banksy done the second album cover of Black Tongue. Hey, put it up now, Kells. Put it up now. See that shit. Um, bro, he was like the UK's and ours when that first album came yeah, out. Yeah, of course. You made me want to listen to it now, actually. Yo, um, you, you know why I just looked away like, rah. You need to put that on. Shit. Because all them time there now, you're looking at you're looking at Twanga, you're looking at Estelle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Them, they, These are the people that are popping now. Yeah. Maneuver. Run. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, no. He said it. I got a tune, I got a tune where I'm fe- me and Roots maneuver back to back, bro. What? Me, imagine. I'm, hey. Right. Yo, fam. Like, me and Roots. Hey. Me ah, uh, what? I'm gonna tell them. Where did this story. come? Hold on, where did this come from? This is some fucking madness. <laughs> We're talking, right? <laughs> Remember, these guys are legends, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. even now, I'm talking. You can see I'm up. These guys are legends, right? So me and T, we get our first tour, and the first tour was support act for um, Roots Maneuver, right? They don't give a. I'm not saying Roots Maneuver and them don't give a fuck because they know who we are, but. Mm. You know, we're not Todd was a super Roots Maneuver fan. Right, right, of course. I don't think he'd produce Slime and Reason yet, but he may have. So I may get my timeline slightly wrong. However, we get shows in, I think, I want to say Nottingham, Scotland, and a couple of other places, right? Cool. Me and Toddler end up in Scotland. Roots Maneuver is still, it will always be a legend. Mm. And um, he's backstage. So me and T are just playing a couple of rhythms and just vibes and what Ricky Rankin works in. I'm like, fucking Ricky Rankin, oh shit. Yeah, right, yeah. Then Roots Maneuver. Banana co- Clan in the house. Oh Ooh. shit, we got Gordon and all them, man. <sighs> and then um, we're backstage, right? So Roots, is, and I think it's on YouTube somewhere. So Roots is like, what's that? What, what are you playing there, bro? So playing a couple, couple of rhythms. Like, yeah, let me jump. Let me take a piece. Oh, stuff. So he jumps on and I'm like, Rah! Roots is playing on our rhythm tea. So me and me and Root start going back and forth, back and forth, yeah. back and forth, freestyling, running jokes, back and forth, and Ricky Rankin and all of it. So then after that now comes um, another tune that T produced now. So I think this is after Slime and Reason. T's produced this rhythm. Roots has jumped on it. My name comes up in the conversation. 
Me, Roots Maneuver, on a Toddler T production. What? Mad. Madness, bro. Like, them are the, and them are the things that you will, you Whoa. know, when I'm 80, uh, I'm going to sit down and go, I'm on a team with Roots Maneuver. Yeah, it's one of them ones. You know what I mean? It's like a big bucket list. That's of like, course, in man. fact, it's not even, in, it's not even the bucket. That's just <laughs> like wide field. That's like, that's the baseball list. <laughs> That's the big catch. That 100%. So when we talk about these UK legends, um, you know, I'm on tunes with Black Twang, with uh, Shani T, Roots Maneuvre, Ty. Um, Rest in peace, Ty. R.I.P. Ty. Um, just so many of these legends navigate David Boomer, you know. Um, UK Apache. We haven't big up UK, UK Apache yet, neither. Big up UK Apache. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm on... I've worked with a lot of these people and I'm so happy that, you know how they say don't meet your heroes? Mm. I'm so happy I don't have none of those stories mm. for, the, for, for the UK guys. You know, mm. I'd freestyle with General Levy on stage. I think I'm on a tune with General He's Levy. the best person to freestyle with, bro. Yo. He's, he'll just like, he, oh man, he just, see, and he's smiling all the way. He is, <laughs> yo. Um, we did a show, well, Heat Wave um, put together a show Um I want to say probably about 10 years ago. I want to say it was about 10 years ago. They put put together a dancehall show because they were trying to recreate, you know, Sting Days or whatever. It wasn't Clash Sting or anything mm, like that. Okay. But, excuse me, there was um, on that Lady Shan, Big Up Stush, um, Lady Leisha, um, Wiley came through, um, Mr. Williams. Like, there was so many... Old time Mr. Williams. Old time Mr. Williams. Wee. There's so many artists that came through and featured on that particular... Ruby Dan, Big Up Ruby Dan... Um, that featured on that particular show, Showtime it was called, uh-huh. that particular show. And you can get the DVD as well. Um, bro, yeah, man, you're just making me go mm-hmm. back in the... You're just making me think about all of these <laughs> legendary things that have happened, you know, that waka, I'm thankful waka, for. Waka, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, man. Um, and the scene is still small enough mm. um, for that to happen, mm. you know? You may live in New York and never meet Jay-Z, Right? But I think actually that's a really good analogy. Yeah, but you've done you've met the equivocal in the UK. I think so. That's mad. I think so, man. And I'm so, again. I just can't stop saying how happy I am and how humbled mm. I am to to have met these people and 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 like to have grown up on their music, mm. meet them and impress them so much for them to say, "Yo, jump on a tune." Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's bonkers. It's bonkers for me, man. But love it. And just be great at your craft. Your skill sets, versi- versatility. Talk to me about the, the rhyming patterns of it all. Talk to me about the MC ability. Talk about what you focus on as a skill set. What I thought was fitting in the pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, again, just to kind of hark back to, to what I was saying before, growing up um, and certainly being a teenager... And seeing like people shell the place like Dreddy, mm. you know, what I mean, that were just so great at this whole ability to, to just hold the crowd and mm. just do their thing, you know, what I mean, um, even seeing the the the, the elders and all well, all them older, but you know, the shabbers and the so on, and just seeing the ability to keep a crowd's attention. And one of my favorite artists of all time um, is a man called Papa San. Papa right? San, <laughs> and. The reason why he's one of my favorites is because he's the type of guy that will be able to say, stop the music, no rhythm, no nothing, and literally spit a 10 minute a cappella at the crowd and get a forward the whole way through. Just be like, da 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 da, crowd goes mad, da 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 da, crowd goes mad. And it was always the way how he did it, his diction, his whole, um, the flows that he always used. So for me, it was always like, okay, I want to be like that. Mm. You know what I mean? I, you know, Shabba had this big, heavy voice. You know what I mean? That that kind of... Um, he was lyrical as well, and he had his flows as well, but he had this big, heavy voice. Mm-hmm. When he walks into a room, I'm mm-hmm. oh, me, man! The whole place just tear down, <laughs> that, right? That still scares the shit out of me too, though, bro. Like, he <laughs> well, comes... Oh, okay, we're listening. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Um, Bontekiller got a big, old, heavy voice, right? And and that just parts the room anyway. Mm. And they, they managed to... You know, there's a rhythm... And they managed to slice through the rhythm mm. with, them, with them voices, right? And I always wanted to just make a path and just just flow with the rhythm and become mm. an instrument as well. Mm. And so when it comes to writing, I always try and find that pocket 
and fit myself in between and become an instrument with that rhythm. Mm. You know what I mean? Whatever's going on in the rhythm, make myself stand beside it sometimes, stand in front of it sometimes, pull back and just, just mm. keep it there and maintain that attention. Make people say, the fuck did he just say? Redman is another one of my favourite MCs Ooh. of all time. You know what I mean? And yeah. he had a bar that said, I, you know, I can't remember the bar exactly, but he's got, I, I, I write bars to make people stop and say, what the fuck did he just... Mm. You know what I mean? And that's just all I wanted to do, make people go, rah, did a man just... Nah, let me check that. But Ragga's yeah. Ragga, the roots though, and when you talk about those names... Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a bravado on stage as well. There's a yeah. presence. It's like, yeah, it's amazing what you can do with, you know, your syllables and your mm -hmm. consonants and your vowels when you target them at the right... A, there's a real co comedic value yeah. to the delivery on certain things. Absolutely. You've got to be able to stand... You're on your ones over, yeah. most of the time. I mean, that's, the, that's as much part of the craft, right? Absolutely. I think, and again... You remember who we were saying about, I was talking about going back and looking at old school VHSs and so on and understanding the the, the, the legacy that mm. has come before me. Another artist that I need to mention because I cannot mm -hmm. get him is Professor Knotts. That's another, that's another guy where when we're talking about intonation in the voice and mm. really being able to tell a story mm. and really you're up there on your ones. And it's almost, when you're an MC, you have to have comedian timing. I don't know if... You know what I mean? you asked, that yeah. kind of is what makes sense, right? So like a, a comedian, and I remember once somebody explaining to me about comedic timing, right? And they were saying, it's not the fact that a comedian tells you a joke that, you, that was so intelligent that you didn't get it and they were teaching you something. It's the fact that the comedian's timing is so that you get it at the same time that they're saying it, right? So whenever the punchline drops... It's it's almost that moment where you where it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, you know it's coming and you go blah, 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 and you you get it at the same time as they tell it. That's what makes that timing. So for instance, if Jay-Z might if if somebody like a red man might say, Um, I do something hard to find like weed in the carpet, you go, Oh shit. And when he says it, you, you get it. You know what I mean? And that's the whole thing. So it's and that's what makes Jay-Z, even though Jay-Z talks about how he simplified his lyrics, don't necessarily simplify his lyrics. He just his delivery is so on point mm. that it drops the same time your brain's working that mm. you kind of relate to him. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just me probably getting a bit too scientific, but I just wanted to I wanted to be a bit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted to have that time and I wanted to have that kind of pattern, that way we sit down on a rhythm and kind of step up and do, do, do you know what I mean? Another guy that, I, that, that another artist I used to love was like a ludicrous, again, timing. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? It's all about that timing with the drops of the punchlines and so on. Oh so that's God. what I kind of You just blow my mind on the, on the comedy analogy there. That's just blow my mind. Um, Nicki Minaj is another person that I feel yep. like. Don't get, like, because of whatever, she, you know, she's, you know, she's up in the starships now, but she's certainly like, All right, punchline so, is like, you know, she's on that. She's. Do you remember the Nicki Minaj, do you remember Skinny Nicki Minaj? Or uh, yeah, I remember that, the freestyles she used to do. On the Biggie Rhythms yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. Right. That Nicki there? Yeah. Oh. Uh, no. That's why I brought her up because that, I think people underestimate I mean, she did Monster, the Kanye tune. That mm. for me, I was like, oh, she's, she's here. Mm -hmm. That was a big tune. But those freestyles, you know, it, there's certain MCs that really do it. Mm -hmm. you know and it's from source you can yeah. just hear that you know Nikki definitely for me is one of those artists that you know she got bars and you know I'm not mad at her for making her money mm. because I know her history mm. you know what I'm saying so I know that she's I've heard her doppy those freestyles mm. bro you know what I mean and now you're on Starships and you're doing your thing and Starships are meant to fly. Yeah, do your thing. Yeah, Make yeah. your money because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got pleasure out of them, them early freestyles, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's all good. And she shows every now and again that she can still bring it back if she wants to. Yeah. So it's all good for me. Yeah, whatever artists are there that like. I think you would say um, fall in line with the integrity and value that you share as an artist. What's, what, people, um, like Red Man's a good example, you know, and you know, and the like, that, that era. That era, you had to, you know, so if you're talking, you're talking Red, you're talking J, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then, you know, if you want to bring it all the way forward, then I'm looking at like a J. Cole, mm. who I think has got that integrity. I think he's got the bars. Mm. Um, and when you, when all of that crew, actually, yeah. to be to be fair, like yeah. all that crew, they got their bars. And even even the baby, I think he's got, he's got bars on his ready, you know what I mean? And Dave East. Dave East, yeah, definitely. But I, you know what? The reason why I didn't mention him is because I probably would take him back to, although you forget that he's a younger. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he's not in the Nas era, although he's that, you know, associated. But yeah, Dave East and all those guys, man. 
definitely talking about some real bars there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Conway the Machine. Oh, oh shit. The we only thing I was Griselda. Saying, like, bro, oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying. So they, it's but there. I th- I'm not sure they always choose their... I mean, they got some awesome producers and beat... But the, sometimes I think that the, the, the loops and samples they use overpower their own voices sometimes. Mm, Do you feel mm. that? I think when it comes down to it, yes, to a certain extent. Because I like to hear the bars. I like to hear bars. Yeah. And, but then... Again, maybe it, must, must, it might just be a modern style of production where it's like, okay, yeah. cool, you know what, we're, we're, we're about these beats, mm. you know? I don't know. And and that, could that just be a mix thing? It might just be a mix. Do you know what I mean? It could be as simple as that, just, mm. you know? But yeah, there's a lot of dudes out there that, that kind of, killing got, it. they're killing it, man. And that's not to say I got any, I, you know what? I know that people are probably going to shoot me here. I don't have a problem with Drake. Me neither. I don't know. No one's got problems with Drake in this household. I'm trying to look it out. Drake's all right. Drake's all right. Because you know where he's come from. Yep. And you know that he throws down. He also he, he holds the, the scene uh, as a badge of honor. Absolutely. He does come from a place. You know, he, he knows what he's talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. I think 100% I, I, I rate a Drake. You know, like, there's so many out there right now. And I don't fall for that whole line of the new MCs and, and lyricists, you know what I mean? Mm. Because I think that they are. And I think they're about there. I just think it's a new generation we need to accept. Just, and we, yeah. we need, it's not even that we need to accept. You know, it's evolution. You know, when we all came out, when we all were doing our thing, you know, you had people look and go, no, that's not quite what it used to be. Mm. Let it continue. Long yeah. may it continue. Yeah, people were doing that with us. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, so long may it continue, man. Yeah. I love it. That's right. So, what's the future? You got proper. You listen. There's multiple things going on with this man here. You so see, you've got the. You're raising. You're fundraising at the moment. Yeah, fundraising at the moment. So I'm going to be on the 29th of July. I'm going to be cycling the length of the UK, um, but it's not. You know, I'm an MC, right? So, and I'm a person that does things a little bit different. Mm. So it's not going to be in the traditional way, which is like 800 miles or whatever. I'm going to be stopping at every, well, most major cities, right? So we start off well, Jana Groats, then I go to Inverness, then Edinburgh, Newcastle, um, Leeds, Huddersfield, Manchester, Liverpool, Lon- um, Birmingham, London, Exeter, Yeovil, and then Penzance. So I go to all these major cities, Stop by, chat to people, blah, blah, blah. Because the whole reason I'm doing this is to raise money for three different charities, right? Three different? Three different charities. Wow. So I'm trying to raise five grand in total. Um, if more than that is perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people, please donate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put and the links down, put the links down. We'll put the links down. Um, the first one is Young Minds. Um, and obviously, this is in no particular order. It's just, you know, Young Minds deals with um, young people um, between the ages of around 13 to 24. And the highest number of suicide is in those um in that age bracket right and also harming self-harming in that Mm -hmm. um, in the uk um especially when you look at things like covid and how it's impacted people if you think about it a school kid when we were going to school that was your life right yeah yeah, 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 so imagine they just come and take that away from you yeah big time it it impacts you you know um and they help young people with with the challenges that they're facing another one is called the i can charity and that's for children that have got speech and language um communication um difficulties needs um so, because again, with these kids, especially in impoverished areas, um, they get forgotten. Yeah, they do, yeah. If you, you know, if you come from a well-to-do affluent area, affluent family or whatever, you can afford to get that special help. Yeah. If you can't, you don't even, you don't even recognize that mm-hmm. that help's needed. So, um, I want to bring some awareness to that. And the third one is St. Vincent that got help, hit with a volcano. Wow, yeah. Um, not too long ago. And the repercussions of that mm. and the displays people have been displaced and so on and a lot of people had to remain in St Vincent because they hadn't had the jab God. so it makes, in, it makes the British Covid the first world problem when you think about those when, levels of exactly when you oh. think about all of that happening so I'm just trying to raise as much money as possible so I can help and bring as much awareness as possible with my platform um, to and these this causes platform, and this part, platform yes, yes, yes. To, this, to these causes because I think it's just imperative that you know we use what we have to help people that's fantastic, bro. Free at once. Yeah. It's the magic number, I've been told. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the that's the main aim. That's 29th of July, so I've got a couple of months until we get to that. And then I don't know when this is coming out. Actually. Oh, we'll, we'll just get it out. We'll just, you know, the next... Yeah, we'll get, we'll get yeah. it out now. Yeah, we're here. So go and donate, get involved. All the links in the below. Um, I'll put them on the screen as well. So yeah, make sure you donate. Spread the love. Seriously, inside the place. Brilliant, cool. brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Thank you so much for inviting me, bro. It's a beautiful journey. Yeah.
man, it has to be, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 it's, it's a great journey and it's, it's just great to, to be here. It's great to, to actually chat to yourself as well. Yeah, you too, bro. Um, <laughs> it's, like I say, when we talk about legends, you know, bro, you're one as well, you know. Oh, and I know you thank know Thank you, that. brother. No, thank I appreciate you saying um, that. From you, I appreciate you. Because, <laughs> like, you know, from the outside looking in, you know, uh, uh, we, we orbit you know, on the same planet and mm -hmm. you just never know when... When a when you're going to connect, when it happens, and whether it, what you're doing even resonates in certain areas of this this orbit, and it's fucking great. I really appreciate you saying that, bro. bro and you as well, man. Like when we first connected, and you kind of mentioned, well, Ruska hollered me and said, "Oh, you know, um, Killer Kells my holler," and I was like, "Same man that I know, <laughs> like not even no no, you know, like you." And it's like, yeah, I was like. Man knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like that. It's like, yeah. It's he like, knows the same when he takes me oh, back, shit. right? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Because, bro, like, I've heard you on tracks and, I'm, you know what I mean? I know your, I know your, your, your history. You know what I mean? So I was just like, honoured. Bro. Oh, brother, thank you. Good Likewise, up, thank you so much for passing through the, thank you. the trap, man. Fucking, seriously, inside the place, come on. No games. Choo, 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 choo. Killer Killer Podcast striking once again with all the love in the world to you lot. Stay lucky, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Take care of yourself. Sharing is caring. Peace. Bang. Ah, oh, man, so sick.